Well, I just tried a Zemi trip with using brews instead of sharks, and uh, maybe the setup wasn't quite right, but yeah, it sucked. Uh, just spend so much time fucking drinking brews, and then you have to restore, and then you have to super calm it back up, and yeah, I, I, I got like three kills, but it was just not any better than sharks, really, so I think I'm going to stick with sharks uh, for food. I guess I could maybe use like tuna potatoes or some shit, but I don't think those are really worth it, but yeah, this boss is just, no matter how you do it, it's slow. Solo, so yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I've been doing some solo trouble brewing, and uh, here I, here's my uh, sixth point solo in this game, so that's pretty good. I've never actually really tried soloing trouble brewing, like actually doing games, uh, but yeah, still two minutes left, so I think that it might be possible to even do seven or eight points solo if you're really good. And also, I'm on the red team, which is just disadvantaged because the layout of the red side is different than the blue side, and the red side is worse. Uh, objectively speaking, so I, I think I'll try to get on the blue team to really get a good score, but I also didn't use any run recharges either, so that could speed it up even more, but 6 point solo isn't too bad, and I got 5 point solo last game. You have to really plan out what you're doing and, you know, make the best use of your inventory space and your runs and stuff to preserve time, but it actually is kind of fun to try to solo this mini game. It's interesting to see how well I can do in a game, so... Six points, not bad. That should be 112 pieces of eight. That's the problem, is that if I AFK the entire game, I get 100. If I pay attention the entire game and try hard, I get 112. And maybe like 114 or 116 if I really got really good at soloing. But I still might do it, because it could shave off maybe like five or ten hours left of what I have for Turtle Brewing. So, like, if you really add it up. So, that could actually be pretty good. But yeah, just figured I'd try out my skills. And uh, it is actually pretty fun to solo. So I might end up doing more of that in the future. Just did a seven uh, point game, and I had the resources in there for eight, and I just missed it. It was, I swear, it was like five seconds away at the end of the game. But yeah, definitely it's possible to do eight points if I had done a couple of things a little bit better. I definitely could have gotten it. it was so close, but yeah, seven points, not bad. Eight points, definitely possible. I was on the blue team, by the way, which definitely helped a lot. Well, guys, it has been a uh, a long journey, but it's time to buy the last naval set. There it is. Every single naval set has been purchased on this game. Purple naval looks hideous. <laughs> I'm probably never going to wear it, but all of the naval sets are done. That's so sick. So finally, um, of course, this is only, well, I'm over halfway there now, um, but I still have to get five flags. So these ones are uh, five plus four plus three. That's 12 plus four is uh, 16K more pieces of eight still. So. That'll still take a while. It feels like I've been doing this for a while, but really I've just been doing it like a little bit every week. Um, and you know, gradually getting pieces of eight. But yeah, I've spent somewhere around like 80 or so hours in trouble brewing, I think. And I still have a good like 50, 60 or so left. So that'll take a good bit of time. But yeah, that's a big thing done, which is pretty cool. I can put all these in my player and host if I want to, but I think I'll probably just leave them in the bank because they look nicer there. Um, but yeah, I think the next thing I'm probably gonna buy is uh, this flag right here, the bronze fist flag. It looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've got a good portion of trouble brewing done, and I think I'm going to go back and finish my Zami task. Well, there's the Zami task done at long last. Uh, it took a very long time, but yeah, it's finally done. Duoing again with uh, Tazar Hero for my clan right now, so doing a good job. I'm just being a noob and uh, DPSing while he's doing the tanking, so. But yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, I haven't gotten any more drops since the uh, crazy loot train, but things are maybe finally settling down a little bit, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty fun task. I'm definitely glad that I grew some balls and decided to actually do the Zambi tasks instead of skipping them, but I'm probably just going to finish off, the tri off this trip. I have no idea how long it'll take, but uh, may as well since we're here and have all these supplies. Well, this is not good at all. Yeah, well, that caused me to die, but uh, the only thing that actually dropped on the ground is my tacits, and you know, they stay there forever, so KC only takes like five or ten minutes, so nothing really lost, and at least I finished the trip, but I think, or finished the task, but uh, I'm going to get a new task, see what it's going to be. I don't know if I have a use, partially used slayer ring. Um, and I think as usual, I'm just going to hope for some DKs. Well then, there we go, DKs. <laughs> Decided to do a duo bandos trip with Desire Hero once again, and uh, we picked up a bandos hilt, so that's, I guess, not the greatest drop, but it's something. Drop of the task is a Seer's ring. Yay. And Dragon Axe coming in. And the Archer's ring, finally another good drop of DKs. That's, that feels so good, man. That's nice, like, three mil in the bank. Oh, beautiful. And there we go, Dagonoth task is done. Done it did in one trip, so uh, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, it was 150, I think it was, so I think that's the best I've done so far, but uh, I could definitely do more. Towards the end, I was just leaving my prayers on because I knew that I would have plenty of supplies. Um, 
But yeah, I think I could probably do like 170, 180 in a trip just doing what I was doing. And if I was really hardcore flicking, I could probably do like 200 in a trip. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's definitely easy to do an entire task in one uh, trip. So I'm going to go get a new task. But yeah, let's see. Loot from this trip, uh, or loot from this task and trip. Pretty much just the ring and then, you know, 500k there. But Oh, and uh, the bones. Kapow. Such a nice uh, tire reward right there. That's either the second or the third dragon pickaxe I've gotten at Venonatus. <laughs> Definitely gonna tell you out immediately, but that's fucking awesome. So yeah, I decided to do a little bit of Venonatus. Um, oh shit, yeah, this is a this is a PvP world. Probably don't wanna be uh, standing around too too long out there, but yeah, PvP world seemed to work well for Venonatus. Probably shouldn't leak my secrets, but yeah. So the wilderness boss pets are actually quite common, relatively speaking. Um, so they'd be kind of nice to get out of the way, and I've do want to start getting my kill counts up on some of them, so Venonatus I can kill a decent amount, so I'd, I think I'd like to go for maybe like 500 kills in the next few days, see how that goes, uh, if I feel like it'd be a... I've already gotten at least one D-pick, maybe even two, at <laughs> uh, Venonatus, my luck there is crazy so far, but... Yeah, there we go, actually, let's, let's get a quick price check, let's see how much this thing is. 1.3 mil, very nice. Well, I just got my first Corporeal Beast kill, I'm, on, I'm doing a four-man with, uh, I guess, a new friend of mine. Um, so yeah, my first corp kill, I don't have to have zero on the boss kill counter anymore, but yeah. I guess this is the start of a very, very long, long journey. <laughs> Alright, well I spent a few hours at corp. I did uh, about 26 or 27 KC is what I'm on, and I think we did a total of maybe like 130 kills or so, probably. And I'm doing some barb assault now, because I gotta do some of that as well to uh, get the penance pad eventually, so... High gamble, first one, what are we gonna get? Uh, you can attacker points. And 50 watermelon seeds, sweet. All right, time for gamble number two. Do my attacker points. 297 death runes. And gamble number three, what's it gonna be? 25 uncut diamonds. And gamble number four, 67 KGP. Gamble number five. The suspense is real, a warrior home. So yeah, my audio quality might sound a little bit different and that's because I just got a new uh, mic set up. Some of you guys might have seen it on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I got a new mic uh, arm, it's a Rode PSA1. It's, I used all stream money to get it, so thank you everyone who uh, has donated on my streams or if you can just watch my streams. Um, this person there, I guess I'll just log out. Um, but yeah, I used, I used uh, completely stream money, so it's all stream funded, so that's really cool. Um, and I'm actually about halfway to having enough for my computer also, the new computer I'm planning to get just from stream cash, so thank you everyone who uh, has been helping me out on stream and everything, that's really cool, but yeah, the auto quality should be better, I got a pop filter, I got a uh, really nice arm stand thinger and everything, and it's just like, it's, it's like right on the side of my face rather than sitting on my desk the way it used to be, so I had to get a new task when I did my diagnosis test, so let's see what Neve wants to give me now, greater demons, alright, I guess I will uh, be doing some Zami. Well, that's happened sometime. These, this thing actually does drop long and curved bones. Even though it doesn't drop big bones, I guess it's still classified on that table. So long bones are 1 in 400, I think, and uh, curved bones are 1 in 5k from anything that drops them. So this is rarer than a deep pick, but more common than a treasonous ring. Um, and I guess five times as common as the pet, but yeah, that adds to the collection. I think I have like 43 of them now or something ridiculous like that. Oh, the Dragon 2H sword coming in on kill 283. <laughs> doesn't affect other RNG. Keep thinking that. Wow, another Dragon 2H sword coming in on kill 323. Oh, so great. On kill 330, the Dragon Pickaxe coming in. That's the second one I've gotten solo. I know that I got like probably two or three of them a while ago before the counter and before everything else, but yeah, look at that. I should probably just get the hell out of here because I have a D2H and D-Pick in my inventory right now, but yeah. <laughs> I think that's like 1.3 mil, not bad at all. So this is something that probably like never happens outside of the quest. Uh, I think it's for part of Recipe for Disaster. Um, you have to catch a jubbly bird, which uh, is basically similar to a chompy bird, but you have to set these weird balloon toads instead of the regular toads, and you still get the same kill count number as if it was a, were a chompy bird, so it's kind of pointless, but these things are fucking huge. and. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, there's one thing that I kind of missed. I only have 20 HP, so that's interesting. Um, something that's somewhat completionist that I kind of just realized is something called uh, the satchels in the creature creation minigame, which is in the Tower of Life. Holy shit, that is huge. 
So there's the raw jubbly, that's what I was looking for. Um, to make a jubster, you need to have a raw jubbly and a raw lobster. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get a few of these. Uh, I just wanna get all the satchels because they're like six different satchels. I'll never wear them, they're completely useless, but they are untreatable, somewhat completionist type content, so I'm game. Uh, it will take. I've already gotten four of the six, I think, and uh, they don't take it all a long time to get, so yeah, this is somewhat interesting. It's not going to be anything useful. You can also get a tea flask, though, which you can hold five doses of tea in, and tea is also completely useless. I don't really know why, like, I don't know, I really wonder what was going through Jadika's head when they created things like the creature creation minigame, because it's probably the most useless thing ever. The only thing that has any benefit whatsoever is the unicows, because you can get you can farm unicorn horns from them. Um, but like the satchels and the tea flask, it's just like, why would you ever make that? It's just such a strange thing, but yeah, I figure I might as well. I like playing odd pieces of content, even if they're pretty much useless, because it's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, another thing I noticed is that uh, the diary reward doesn't affect jubbly birds, like the double spawn rate that you get from chompy birds does not affect jubbly birds, so good fight. These birds weigh 10 kilograms each also, I guess it's somewhat fitting because they are just massive, but it's kind of funny. Something that actually makes sense for its weight, but yeah. Very, very odd and unco uncommon item right there, but uh, it's used with the raw lobster to make the jubster, but uh, once you kill one of them, uh, they drop noted raw jubbly, so I think I'll probably, I'll have extras. Maybe I'll see if I can sell them in the G for a stupid price because they're such an uncommon item. Well, this might just be the strangest creature in RuneScape. This is the Jubster. It looks like a Jubbly, except it has a lobster tail and lobster claws. I think whoever came up with the idea for this uh, mini game, I guess it is, is also just a really strange individual. Oh, got the satchel in the first kill. Well, oh my god, these things are so weird. This is the frog eel. It's just got two legs and somehow manages to balance. Or maybe it's just. Maybe it like leaves its head on the floor. Look at, watch it move though. Look, look at this. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, you have to use raw cave eel and giant frog legs. I had to pay 5k each for these fucking things. It drops the raw cave eel, so I'll get more of those. But the, oh, another tea flask. Yeah, I have a ton of tea flasks now. But yeah, lots of cave eels. Well, there's all the different colored satchels that you can get. Each one drops a different color. And uh, I got eight tea flasks also, which probably are the same drop rate. And uh, I'll probably get rid of all of them. I guess maybe I'll keep one because uh, they don't stack in the bank. And neither do multiple satchels. But yeah, these things are not really good looking. They basically just look like purses. So I guess if you're a, a chick or just somebody who's into purses, then maybe you'd like these. They can store uh, a banana, a piece of, or a cake, and. All right, let me see. Um, and a triangle sandwich, and that's all that they can store. So, I mean, they're extremely useful items that definitely uh, definitely were worth the dev time whenever they were actually created, but... <laughs> yeah, there we go. Fun, uh, weird content in this game. There it is, I've been waiting for one. A treasonous ring, look at that. <laughs> Please, God, don't let me get PK'd in a PvP world, because there's, like, nobody in the wilderness, but, uh... <laughs> There we go, that's awesome. I think it's like 3 mil or so, but let me price check it once again into the bank. Yeah, 3.3 .3 mil, that's awesome. Here's a price check of some of my Venonatus loot. So, um, this does not include runes or gems, I think are the things I'm mainly missing, and I guess antidotes also, and I didn't keep track of the dark crabs and super restore since I used those on the trips mostly, but yeah, the gems and the runes kind of get swallowed into my bank, as I usually say, but yeah, the treasonous ring and the onyx bolts are the majority of the money. The onyx bolts is, or bolt tips are especially quite a bit of money. Every time you get a drop, it's like five or six hundred k. Um, and you know the picks are nice too. And uh, actually, I guess second place goes to the rune knives, which is interesting. The grimy snapdragons are one in one twenty eight, and I've only gotten two drops. Actually, six of those are not from this, but they drop a hundred at a time. And uh, I should have had, I guess, like three drops of them by now, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, I would say I've probably made at least 25 mil, maybe 30 mil, because I've gotten a lot of runes, like I get death, bloods, and chaos, and those add up to a lot, and also the gems, it drops uh, rubies and diamonds, and I've gotten quite a few of those, so I'd say it's probably upwards of 30 mil, but yeah, this boss is actually really good money, it's close, I guess it's probably around like 70 to 80k GP per kill on average, so that's pretty awesome. Another GP comes in, <laughs> there we go, kill 398, another drop already, not bad at all. Oh, this thing is shitting out deep picks. Look at this. Dragon Pickaxe number four, only like 20 or 30 kills later. This is crazy, man. 
Well, I'm not geared up from, for some Zolra. Um, I, I'm kind of thinking recently that I'm sort of more inclined to not do so much Slayer and uh, God Wars Dungeons and stuff like that in general until uh, a few months from now. And the reason for that is partly because, uh, well, there are a couple of new Slayer bosses coming out and boss Slayers coming out, and Slayer's just going to be tweaked. I think pretty much all of that is happening in, like, next month and the month after. So it'd probably be wise to wait for that. And also, uh, most of the bosses that I do for Slayer and, like, God Wars Dungeon and stuff especially, it'd be really good to have an Ellie for those, and it's going to take me a few months to get to having enough money for an Ellie. And things like Zolra, Wilderness Bosses, uh, Giant Mole, things like that, they don't really need an Ellie, and they bring in money, and also they wouldn't be good for Slayer. I guess if you could get Zolra assigned, that'd probably be pretty, pretty good for Slayer, but uh, there's a potential Zolra nerf that could some maybe happen, I don't really know, so it might be wise to also do that earlier. So yeah, I think I'm probably actually going to do a lot of wilderness bossing and keep doing some Zolra and stuff. I got PK'd for, I got a fucking drop of 100 Snapdragons, and then as soon as I got it, a fucking gigantic team got me. It's like, sweet. So that was, that ripped like, I don't know, 700, 600, 700k, some shit like that, but, oh well. Um, but I'll probably get back to Velanasis tomorrow morning, or tomorrow afternoon or something, I don't know, and finish off 500kc. Maybe leave it there, maybe keep going, I don't know. I really, really like the pet, I really want, really want to get that pet, because it's a really sick one, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, w I would like to do another 1,000 giant moles pretty soon, get that up to 5k, hopefully get that pet, so I'll probably be working that on that over the next week, but... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will be streaming after it goes live, so you guys can check that out too. I'm not really sure what I'll be doing yet, but I guess you guys can come find out. And I'll be doing Trouble Brewing 1 to 3, so you guys can uh, come make some TV games with me as well. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you all later.